faulty expansion vessel on a Worcester Bosch Green Star or your Worcester Junior combi boilers or system boilers even. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video I'm going to show you how to replace the expansion vessel on the back of a Worcester Bosch Green Star or Junior or SI combi boiler or system boiler even as well. So first of all, what we'll do, we'll look at a job that I've just been to. I've actually replaced this boiler with another boiler, um, but I'll show you the process of taking the boiler off the wall and changing the expansion vessel. And as always, if you're gonna work on a gas boiler, you must be gas safe registered or competent to do so. With this particular boiler, it's very important because it does have an issue with the burner seals and it does need checking with a flue gas analyzer to make sure that it's safe. So as I said, it's very, very important. So first of all, we're gonna do all our safety checks and then we're gonna isolate the boiler and we're gonna remove the fuse. You can also get a lock for the fuse if you're gonna be going outside or going away from the boiler. If we have a look on this Worcester Bosch boiler, the expansion vessel is on the back so when you're doing a service on one of these boilers, you should be pumping the expansion vessel up. And if this had been pumped up, then it may not have failed, um, who knows? But it's probably not been serviced for quite a long time. When you do put your screwdriver in here, you shouldn't be getting water coming out of there. Just to explain how, how this expansion vessel works, so if you imagine that's side on in the boiler and one side of this has got the central heating water so on this this side where the this side of it has got the central heating water and then this side of it where the where the Schrader valve is that's the bit that we pump up and that side of it would be air so we'd normally pump air into that um yeah so this side as i say this side of it would be air so just to explain how that happens now what we're going to do we're going to remove the we're going to take the boiler off the wall so i'm going to remove the elbow of the flue the flue that goes through the wall if it's cemented in on these it's not a problem because the flue will normally come off fairly easy there's two screws in the side of the flue that can uh, in the elbow that connects to the flue so you undo them screws and then the piece the gray piece inside you can pull down once you've removed the screws on the top of the boiler it's a little bit awkward to see but there's a little clip there so all you do is with this 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 gray part of the flue here right, it's on the boiler there look all you need to do is twist this so you lift it up a little bit and twist it and then come away from that clip and then you can actually just wiggle the flue wiggle, wiggle it down like that and then that goes below the boiler and you can just slide the elbow straight off it actually comes off really easy does that so now we need to drain the boiler down so we need to disconnect the electrics on it disconnect the condensate trap and then drain the boiler down so to drain this boiler down We've got the floor there, so on the left hand side, the floor, and we turn that so it's in this direction. And if we go all the way over to this side, we'll see the return. And again, that's turned off already. So we turn it in that direction. And then we drain the boiler down. So we'll have a look inside here. Worcester we'll really, really good with this drain off here. But this drain off here, when you open that, you'll get full, full flow out of there and it'll drain down really, really quickly. If you've got a Schrader valve tool as well, you could also take the Schrader valve out and it drains as much of the water out of the expansion vessel then as possible. So then what we need to do, we need to close off all the other valves underneath the boiler so close off the gas, turn off the water, go and open a hot tap 
take the pressure out of the boiler. We then need to remove all the connections off the boiler, all these nuts here, because what we're going to do, we're going to lift the boiler up, lift the boiler out, so we can get to the expansion vessel behind. But also what we've got, we've got a little clip here, which I'll zoom in and I'll show you this clip. And we're going to pull this clip out of here, and then we're going to disconnect the expansion vessel. And when you do remove this, sometimes you'll start getting water coming out of there because it's allowing the air to go in and then it'll gurgle and, and then it'll let water out. So you just need to be careful with that. Um, so as I say, turn all your valves off underneath your boiler, open your hot tap, that'll take the pressure out. Drain it, maybe have a bucket underneath, get as much water out as you can. Disconnect your electrics and then we'll be ready to lift this boiler on. I'll just zoom in now and I'll show you this clip here. So as I say, it's just got a clip just there. Just pull that clip out and then you might need to get like a little tool in there, maybe a set of um, grips or something like that. But that, that'll just wiggle and come out of there. But as I say, you've just got to be careful no water starts coming out of that because obviously if water starts coming out and you're above circuit board here then you obviously you could get the circuit board wet you don't want to do that and another little tip for you is this this connection here if you pull this down it'll disengage from the PRV which is behind there somewhere which I'll show you shortly yeah up there so it's just disengaged there, if you can see, from the um, prefer, uh, pressure relief valve. And now we're ready then, just to lift the boiler off. And then we just need to lift the boiler up. Once we've done that, we can get to the expansion vessel. And that's what it looks like on a customer's wall. And then we just need to remove that screw and lift the expansion vessel up slightly, and then it'll just come out nice and easy. We've also got the PRV there. You might want to change that at the same time, maybe. Please add some comments below. Let me know what you do when you're working on Worcesters and changing expansion vessels. Maybe, maybe you might just put a remote expansion vessel on. Um, but all we need to do is take that screw out and lift the expansion vessel out, just like that. As easy as that. And then obviously just put your new one back in. Screw it in and Put all your boiler back together in reverse order. Um, might be a good idea to put some new washers on, on your um, new, some new fiber washers on your floor, on your hot, on your gas, on your cold, and on your return um, when you put it back together. Also, the flue, lube. Maybe put a bit of lube on the flue just so that you don't damage the flue when you put it back together. But yeah, as I say, if you've got any questions. Please ask below, put your comments below, let me know what you do. Um, with this particular one, we've, we've put a new boiler in. The boiler had some other issues, which were burner seal um, as well. So they needed an expansion vessel and a burner seal, and it was 15 year old, and also slightly low output for the water pressure. So the customer decided to go for a new boiler, but it could have been repaired for a few hundred pounds or so. Um, so yeah, as I say, put some comments below, like, share, thanks for watching.